There's a reason tractors have massive tires. Without any other form of suspension, the tires are the springs and the dampers, improving comfort and traction. And this is exactly why we think plus tires are the future for the humble hardtail. Better grip and a softer ride helps you go further and faster without taking away any of the purity of a rigid rear triangle. So we've gathered together four of the latest models for this month's group test. At 1200 quid, the Norco Fluid HT1 is the cheapest bike in this test, but it's also closely related to the bike that won our Hardtail of the Year award in the £1,000 category last year, so we know it will be a really strong contender. Next up, we've got the Merida Big Trail 500. It's the most expensive model here at £1,350, but for that, you get arguably the best tyres on test, the Maxxis Recon. They're a great all-rounder and they also happen to be our control tyre in this test. And at 80 pounds a pop, they go a long way to explaining the higher price tag. Trek was an early adopter of plus tyres on its hardtails. So the new Roscoe 9 should benefit from all that additional experience. For 1,250 pounds, you get an Alfa aluminium frame, a RockShox Recon fork and a Shimano drivetrain. Finally, we have the Sonda Transmitter. It's a bike that's been designed by outdoor retailer Alpkit, and at first glance, it looks like they've done an exceptional job. You get a thoroughly modern frame with a slack head angle and long front center, a burly RockShox Revelation fork and SRAM NX1 drivetrain. All it lacks is a dropper post. So there are our four contenders. Let's take a look at each one in greater detail. Merida is the only brand in this test not to fit a RockShox fork. Instead, the Big Trail 500 gets a feature-packed Suntour Ion with 130mm of travel. It's got a stout 35mm chassis and a murdered out finish, just like the new revelation on the Sonda. It's also air sprung with external rebound and compression damping. We also applaud Merida for its choice of a short stem and wide bar, even if the 35mm stem is actually a bit short for the frame size, and a 50mm would help put the handlebar in the right place. With the lowest BB height in test, the Merida also needs a correspondingly low handlebar height to make it feel balanced, and that's just not possible with the conical headset spacer. Trek fits a RockShox Recon fork to the Roscoe 9. The chrome steel upper tubes are hard wearing and the surface finish is super smooth, so even though it adds weight, this doesn't detract from the ride quality. Granted, the 32mm chassis can't rival the stiffness and steering precision of the new revelation on the Sonda, but it's still a really sensitive fork and very effective at ironing out small to medium size hits. By swapping the performance compound Schwalber tyres for our 3C Maxxis Recons, we gave the Trek a massive leg up in this test. Schwalber's cheapest OEM rubber is hard, like plastic, so it lacks grip and the paper thin sidewalls offer very little in the way of pinch flat protection. Trek has upped the stakes with the Shimano XT rear mech though, and while it brings bragging rights, it's actually the shifter that makes the biggest difference to gear selection but we actually prefer the SLX unit to Shimano's higher end models as the single shift function feels much more positive than the multi-release design. We had high hopes for the Merida Big Trail 500. It has the best tyres, a great drivetrain and the sleek alloy frame looks badass. But the sizing and geometry are a bit conservative and the ride was undermined by the constant knocking from the Suntour fork. A change to a RockShox fork would help, but as it stands, we can only award the Merida a 7. Another bike to suffer from conservative sizing is the Trek, even though it comes in seven different frame sizes. The problem is it lacks length in the reach measurement and the head angle is on the steep side. It's the most XC focused bike here, which is not to say it's not capable, but it comes unstuck the soonest on steep technical descents. So for big miles, long rides, and fast flowing trails, it's easily deserving of eight out of 10. But it didn't quite get our endorphins flowing as freely as either the Sonda or the Norco. 
The transmitter gets the new RockShox Revelation fork. It has similar levels of stiffness to the Suntour on the Merida, without the annoying knocking sound, and it's every bit as good at ironing out the chatter as the spindly RockShox forks found on the Norco and the Trek. That said, the damping isn't as light as either of the other RockShox units, so riders weighing under 70 kilos may struggle to get the rebound fast enough. For everyone else though, it's easily the best fork in the test. And combined with a slacker head angle, it means that the Sonda has a distinct advantage on trails that are steep or challenging, particularly in light of the 780 bar and stubby 40mm stem. And while we're there, SRAM's NX gears shifted seamlessly throughout the test and we've got no faults with the level brakes either, as the lever feel is nice and solid and there's stacks of power. Smooth double pass welds give the Norco's frame a seamless finish and even on the larger frame sizes there's ample standover clearance. Functionally the dropped drive side chainstay makes the biggest difference though as it affords relatively short chainstays and ample tyre clearance even with a narrow quick release rear end. It has a positive impact on the ride quality in other ways too as it reduces chain slap and the associated vibrations. There are only three size options and none are as progressive as the hardcore hardtails we tested recently, so it's a good idea to go a frame size up. Fortunately that's something that's made easy by the low slung top tube. The Recon fork on the Norco has alloy upper tubes, making it lighter than the one on the Trek. It gets upgraded internals too, with the gold level damper offering improved control on bigger hits. We also like how the two-piece Somax chainset allows you to adjust the preload on the BB, much in the same way as a headset. This should mean that the press fit bearings last a bit longer. But the Norco is the only bike here not to come with lock-on grips, which is one part we don't want spinning freely after the first wet, muddy ride. With the Fluid HT1, Norco has struck a great balance between performance and value. It's a really capable, fun bike that offers a commanding riding position. However, within the first few pedal strokes, we knew that the Sonda transmitter was the bike to beat in this test. With the most progressive geometry allied to the best fork and drivetrain, even the lack of creature comforts can't hold it back. It's rapid and it spins along effortlessly, but it's always primed and ready for action when the trail gets interesting. Leading the charge is the RockShox Revelation fork. There's way more support when diving into steep rough descents, but it's also more stable mid-corner, so front end grip is nice and predictable. The frame isn't as jarring as the Merida, and the riding position is more engaging than either the Trek or the Norco. In fact, the only thing that stops the Sonda transmitter getting a perfect 10 rating is that the bottom bracket is 15mm too high for riders who prefer to pump rather than pedal. That said, we can't recommend this bike highly enough. It's simply blinding and the only real hardcore hardtail in this test. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment below with any other bikes you want us to test.